Now batting for the Yankees, number two, Derek Jeter. Number two. Never get tired of hearing the voice of the late great Bob Shepard introduce the captain, Derek Jeter. And now we do that as well here on our hot stove special as we welcome in the newest member of the Hall of Fame. Derek, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Obviously, a lot of hard work by you went into this. How gratifying is it to see all of your hard work pay off? Yeah, I tell you what, it's, uh, first of all, thank you. Um, but I really didn't know what to expect. I, I don't assume anything. I think people that know me uh, know I did not want to talk about it. I did not want to jinx any possibilities that I had of ever getting into the Hall of Fame. And, and I didn't know what to expect today, but this is just, obviously, it's the ultimate honor. It's the highest honor you can get as a player, and I'm um, completely humbled. Derek, congratulations. You know, we're out on the field as players. It's looked at as an individual thing, but there's a lot of people who enjoy the ride with you. You had your mom and dad, your sister. Now you have your wife and your two girls. How special is it for you to share this all with them? Yeah, it was huge. You know, it's, it's um, you know, my, my parents, my family, my sister, my wife, my kids, well, not necessarily my kids because they obviously were born after my career, but uh, to have the opportunity to share that moment with them because I wouldn't have been here without their support throughout the years. So it's a special moment. It's one I'll never forget. I didn't know what it was going to feel like. Uh, I'm, I don't even know what I said, so I don't know what my reaction was. I have to take a look at it, but uh, deep down inside, it was, it was a completely overwhelming feeling. Derek, congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. That's the massive headline. There, there's a smaller headline that says there was one voter who did not include you on his or her ballot. What did you think when you heard that result? I mean, I could care less, to be quite honest with you. I mean, it takes a lot of votes to get into the Hall of Fame. And to get that many people to all agree is pretty difficult to do. So, um, you know, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't think about that. You know, it's just it's a complete honor to be in the Hall of Fame. Obviously, last year, Derek, your teammate Mariano Rivera went wasn't in with you, one, one, one uh, No, it wasn't <laughs> no, me. It was not. Oh, come on, Derek. <laughs> you said you weren't following. I wish you were at least following that much. <laughs> so, so last year, you attended when Mariano Rivera was inducted. Uh, have you talked to Mo at all about what this ride is going to be like for you over the next several months? Uh, you know, I have not, because I've, I've, like I said, I've sort of, sort of shied away from even thinking about it. I, I was trying not to pay much attention to the discussions, the highlights, the conversations. Uh, I just wanted to get to this moment and hopefully, you know, have, be able to enjoy it. Um, I had no preconceived notions of how it would feel. Uh, so I haven't spoken to him, but I'm pretty sure I'll connect with him. Derek, I have talked a lot about playing with you for three years, and you were the most confident player that I had ever played with during my big league career. Was that there all the way back in high school, or did it just get better and bigger as you had more success? Well, it was there when I was younger. Uh, it was broken when I first started my career because I struggled quite a bit in the minor leagues. But then uh, I was able to overcome that through a great support group and having a little bit of success. And then, you know, once you, you taste a little bit of success, I was able to always draw on that. So, I, you know, I, I understood that this was a game of failure. You're going to fail more than you succeed. But every time I was in situations, I thought I was going to be successful, and I, I believed that. And, and I think uh, the mental side of the game is much more important than the physical part. Derek, if I asked you to complete this sentence, I would not have been elected to the Hall of Fame if I hadn't prepared myself to do these things. What are some of those things on that list that were so important to you throughout your career? Uh, prepare. You know, I prided myself on being prepared. Uh, one of, you know, the thing that makes me most uncomfortable in life, life is being unprepared. You hear athletes talk about the game slowing down. I think it slows down when you're prepared. And when you're caught off guard, that's when things tend to speed up. So uh, obviously you have to work hard. You have to be accountable. You have to have the opportunity. Look, I was given a great opportunity by the Yankees, by the Steinbrenner family, uh, to not only start my career in New York, but to play my entire career in New York. But, uh, you know, I, I prided myself on being prepared. You know, Derek, you mentioned going back to your early days, you had those 56 errors in Greensboro, but the guy who drafted you or scouted you and uh, signed you, Dick Roach, said you handled failure well. Can you remember that time and sort of tell us how you turned that failure into success? Well, I think I, I, I hid 
I was pretty good at disguising failure <laughs> than other people. I mean, it's tough to deal with that. You know, it's, it's tough to deal with at, at any level, let alone when you start your professional court career and you already have questions on whether or not you, you can compete at that level. Then you get to the major league level and you have, you have periods where you're going to struggle um, and you have to get over that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you have to learn to deal with. Um, it, it can be difficult at times to deal with it. But you always have to draw on the, the previous success that you've had in the past. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of confidence when I went about my business. And, and I did that because I felt, like I said before, that I worked harder than everyone else and I was prepared. You know, Derek, when you're a player and you come to the New York Yankees, you realize you're playing in front of the greatest fans in the game. Talk to me a little bit about your relationship with the Yankee fans. And if you really, if you have anything to say to those fans now that you're a Hall of Famer. Man, first of all, I've been very vocal about, uh, I agree with you 100% that, that uh, Yankee fans are the greatest fans in the world. I grew up with them. And, uh, you know, ever since I was 20 years old, I was, I was in the spotlight in New York. And, and uh, they all grew old with me. Uh, and one thing with the Yankee fans is, is they watch every game. They're into every game. They're very knowledgeable. And uh, they respect you if you're accountable. They respect you if you show up and, and you go to work every day. And I tried to be consistent. And I wanted my teammates, I wanted the organization, and I wanted the fan base to be able to count on me. So um, I appreciate how they pushed me. They pushed me for 20 years, and, and still, everywhere I go, I run into Yankee fans. And, and uh, it's a good feeling when you have those conversations with them. Derek, we all know the stories about how you dreamed of becoming a Yankee as a young boy. Once that happens and you begin to have the career that you had, when does the dream extend to the level that you say, I might be having a Hall of Fame career. That might be part of the dream, too. Yeah, that, that is probably about uh, two hours ago when I found out. I mean, it's not really something that, that you think about. I, I tried not to think about it. My One thing that my family always tried to tell me was to enjoy the journey, and I had a difficult time doing that because it was always, I was always focused on what's next and and uh... you know my career ended five years ago and uh... it really yeah, i can't change what i did um, and uh... you know everyone always wanted to talk about the hall of fame or the potential to go to the hall of fame and i sort of shushed them right when they brought it up so now it feels good that I'm able to say that I was elected and, and now we can talk about it. One of the remarkable things too, Derek, about your resume is the fact that your numbers in the postseason and you played a lot of postseason games are so remarkably similar to what you did in the regular season. And again, does that go back to that preparedness? Because Flash has already talked about it, that some players get in those big moments. They feel the pressure. They don't handle them well, but you did. How were you able to do that? I treated every game like it was the same. Whether it was the first game of spring training or game seven of the World Series, I looked at it as it was a baseball game. And, um, you know, you, you prepare for it, you have confidence. But, uh, I, you know, I never went through a regular season game saying, oh, it's just a regular season game. And then you get to the postseason, and all of a sudden now you have to try harder, so to speak. So I treated every game the same. I had fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, but I enjoyed the big moments. I mean, you have to enjoy when the spotlight's on. And, uh, you know, I just always envisioned myself having success. Having said that, I failed quite a bit. But uh, when I was in those moments, I, I felt as though I was going to be successful. Derek, you were named the 11th captain in Yankee history, and I was lucky enough to be on that club when you were named captain. And I noticed you didn't change at all in your leadership style before you were named captain and after that. So can you just tell me a little bit about how you led your team and how important being named captain was to you? It was extremely important. You know, when Mr. Steinbrenner called me and, and, and mentioned the fact that he wanted to name me the captain, he, he told me, he said, listen, I don't want you to change anything. I want you to continue to do what you've been doing. And, uh, you know, I get asked quite a bit I, about leadership. And, and, you know, one thing that I learned from Mr. Torrey is uh, you don't always treat everyone the same. You treat them fairly, but you don't treat them the same because there's different personalities. So you got to take the time to get to know your teammates. And uh, you know, there's different buttons you can push with each individual. So I tried to do that from time to time. And, you know, I was, I was vocal with guys when I felt as though I needed to be vocal. I'd pull them aside. I wouldn't necessarily always do it in a group. Um, but uh, the only way you're able to do that in an effective manner is to get to know your teammates. Derek, you had a memorable career that obviously results in you going to the Hall of Fame. If you met someone tomorrow who knew nothing about baseball and they said to you, 
pick one moment, one play, one at bat that best defined your career, what would you choose? Oof, 96, 98, 99, 2000, and 2009. That's what I'd pay. I couldn't have one. I'd just sort of push them, put them all together there. <laughs> You're talking about five championship rings, obviously, 20 great years in pinstripes. One final thing, because we know your family is so important to you. Do you feel like a portion of this honor is theirs, particularly your mom, dad, and sister who were there for the whole ride? No question. No question. My dad, after I got the phone call, told me, he said, listen, he said, one, you got all of your talent from me. <laughs> and uh, two, he said he played a lot of games to get here. So <laughs> I owe a lot, of, a lot of credit to my family. Well, Derek, what a great honor. Congratulations. Enjoy what is certain to be a very busy schedule moving forward. We look forward to seeing you this summer in Cooperstown. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. It is time for another break.